Hello everyone and welcome back to Cities by Steven. You're talking to Steven. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, please hit that subscribe button. Get that bell notification on too so you don't miss out on a video. Welcome back to the channel where last time we were here, we started building up Oracle Lake, the Lake Leisure District uh, with the boardwalk and everything. It was pretty cool. It was kind of a two-parter because the video was uh, way longer than I was anticipating for it to be when I started recording. So we got a two-parter last week, which is pretty darn cool. Uh, but in this episode, we are going to be continuing our work out in Oracle Lake, but we're going to be focusing on um, a hotel, and we're going to be building up kind of around that area uh, and building a park, expanding out uh, in Oracle Lake. It's going to be a fun build. But first, uh, Kevin decided to visit, my dog Kevin, decided to visit Oracle Valley. So he's just taking a tour, so let's check up on him, see where he is. Here he is. So little Kevin is decided that he's just gonna uh, check out Oracle Valley and all the wonderful things that it has to offer, particularly um, Lafayette Park. Kevin loves Lafayette Park. He's just walking along, enjoying the nature, being a good boy. He's on a mission. Don't know where, probably chasing squirrels. But, uh, oh, Kevin, get away from the road there, buddy. Yeah, okay, see, he listens. All right, so let's uh, let's leave Kevin in Lafayette Park. He'll be fine. He knows where to go. Um, but let's go over here because this is where we're gonna, where where we're going to be building today. Out in Kent Hills, I placed down a district here to kind of get it ready. Kent Hills was the name, and I was like, that's kind of appropriate. I like I like that name. So I made Kent Station over here, with which was a bit of a pre-build, I guess, uh, just to get some transit out this way. So it's an inner city bus station. Uh, with the monorail stop nearby. Uh, so what else is new? Well, I have extended out the community a little bit this way. Uh, got some vacant lots here, transitioning from industry into cool homes. Uh, it's too good of an area not to do that in. And then what else is uh, new? Um, there's a few detailing changes that I've made, uh, including making sure that all the buildings stay at a certain height. Also, uh, on the Thursday video, the part one video, uh, people pointed out to me that uh, I missed a pedestrian connection in from Smith Heights into Prom Pride Promenade. So that is uh, made up right here. So fantastic. Great call out. Really appreciate that. And we also got a name suggestion for Smith Heights since we're using the Heart of Korea um, to change it to this. which I googled it and uh, apparently Wusung is a K-pop star so perhaps the suggestion came from uh, that person's name so may hey maybe they made an a huge investment in Port Roberts uh, built up this community or maybe they went to this high school right here uh, so we are going to be focusing pr primarily on these two buildings that we placed down on Friday's episode this is one of the seaside resorts um, it looks really, really nice. It looks like a classic colonial building, you know, late 1800s, kind of early 1900s. And I thought that this was perfect for like, uh, maybe the original vacation hotel in the area. Um, and we'll get a marina out this way, kind of build it up like that. But then there's a new hotel in the block up here, which has some awesome views out the windows of the lake and the air conditioning units. <laughs> there we go of the lake. So if we're looking at it from this way We have the cliffs and these beautiful windows right here looking out over the lake And then we can turn it into kind of a big hiking area up in this area as well um, And we'll tie it in with this park over here, too So yeah lots on the go. I preemptively did uh, this um, be just because I wanted to kind of play it out see how it would work and decided to keep it uh, but I think we're going to get some shopping out in this area. It kind of makes sense to do, particularly because this hotel uh, needs some shopping nearby. So we need to make sure that we have that at least somewhat close. Uh, but let's start off by kind of clearing this in, like intro area of trees, just like that. And let's create like a parking lot slash the road up to here. And I think we'll probably use this node here uh, for this road. Uh, I think we're going to need to use the road with no parking. And we'll come out about six units. Then we'll go freeform. And we'll kind of curve 
out this way. All right, very cool. So we got that road in, but we definitely need parking. And one thing to do before we play park, uh, lay parking down is make sure that the land around it is somewhat flat. So um, let's level this out a little bit and we won't get too much, but we're gonna get a fairly good sized parking lot, I think. All right, so there we go. We got the parking lot for the hotel. And it's pretty much lined up with uh, with everything, so that works with me. Um, yeah, and then I think the rest of it's going to be, you know, we're going to try to hide it with some nature, make it seem a bit more private running all the way up. And hey, Manor Street, that is uh, a fun name uh, for this giant manor, right? <laughs> uh, and now we should probably get some pedestrian connections in, but we'll definitely focus on that later. Let's try to get the main infrastructure in, uh, like this boardwalk. So this boardwalk is something we placed in Thursday's episode? No, no, I think it made Friday's episode. Uh, and uh, we're just going to continue the elevated bridge. And we're going to bring it out. Let's turn our guidelines off so we have a bit of a better uh, angle here. And this is going to be kind of the road that leads up to this hotel. Now it's still going to need services and road access. So we're going to bring a road close to it but it's gonna make it look like this uh, is right off of the boardwalk itself uh, because we're gonna to need to get a marina in here. And that was the whole purpose of this is to figure out a way to get a marina. And a road is going to meet up with the marina because it needs a road access, but also this boardwalk is gonna intersect with it as well. So I'm gonna use a few roads to kind of create a bit of a marina slash um, uh, launching area for the boats. So let's start off with uh, just the marina. How about that? All right, so we got the key in here now, which is gonna be useful for all these. Uh, but one thing that I forgot to mention in the intro is uh, there was a comment to kind of detail up these awkward concrete blocks with some of the decals from the Promenades and Plazas DLC. Uh, and uh, I found the cobblestone one was really cool to use. It kind of blends right in, uh, but also gives it a lot of texture. So this is what I did on all the other ones. So I'm just gonna kind of copy it over and uh, maybe keep an eye out if we go back there uh, for these awesome decals. Actually, let's just go over here and take a look. So all of the nodes just look like this. I think it adds a lot. You know, this is a major support for the pier, so I guess it makes sense that it's cobblestone. Um, but yeah, it looks like it's rather used too, which is nice. Uh, but we have the pier out this way, and then now we have all these to slide on onto it. Um, so I only played to place this road down here so that we could build the buildings. Uh, but now let's kind of get these all in place. Uh, starting with the restaurant pier. Uh, the restaurant pier is um, supposed to be kind of like the restaurant for the hotel, I guess, or like a restaurant in the hotel. Uh, so that's the idea with this. Let's set it up.
All right, so here is the start of this at least. So we have the old uh, hotel, we have its restaurant, um, which is an Italian restaurant, nice. I mean, that makes sense. Um, so we have our marina and we also have a jet ski rental. So I'm sure, you know, this is a leisure place. There's gotta be a spot to rent some jet skis and cruise around the lake. That's pretty cool. We also have uh, paid parking and I really like the way this road looks, especially how it works with the boat launch. Um, that looks really, really cool. Um, but uh, yeah, this is like a highway piece, or like a, what's, what's it called? Like a rural highway piece, but uh, it looks really cool. as like a long driveway or something like that. So paid parking. Lots of space to detail up down the line. I don't think we're going to get anything along this path. I think that's kind of the appeal of this kind of area. Um, so we'll make it very nature. -y. We'll get lots of path connections all the way uh, through here. Uh, but particularly, we need a path connection from here to here and then from here to maybe even down uh, the cliff. So why don't we start off with some extra pedestrian connections then? Uh, and then one of these in particular, I'm going to use the zoo path with decorations for it's this one. And we are going to uh, make this a pretty prominent path. I would feel like this one would be a really busy path. Um, whoa. Auto save right now. Bad timing. <laughs> uh, but let's get a node in here. I think that is useful because then we can level it out uh, on this parking lot area. So the parking lot doesn't look too weird at all or anything like that. Equal that out. There we go. And then we have a nice path right to the hotel. Maybe, you know, locals, they come to the hotel for dinner or something like that. Or, you know, just coming up from uh, the transit as well. Uh, but we need some more paths. And I think we'll continue with the zoo path with decorations for this kind of main path down to the water. Uh, so let's turn off node snapping so we don't connect into this node and make a weird one. Uh, turn off collision too. And we'll just kind of go down the cliff here. We might need to do a bit of a curve uh, this way. And then we'll come down here a little bit. And we'll just emerge right beside there. Yeah, that's really awesome. And then this last part is not going to be with trees. All right, that looks great. We have some nice path connections down into here. We're just gonna clean this one up as well. And then we should probably get a path connection from here uh, up into here, but I think this is gonna be more of like a secondary path and it's not gonna be one of these uh, zoo paths. Um, uh oh, we have some infill on the uh, parking spaces over here. So we gotta make sure that we uh, fix that. So let's get nose and segments back on move it. And then we'll just pull this one right in like to about there, I guess, before we start seeing some glitchiness. And then let's just pull this one away a little bit. Uh, okay, so let's get a dirt path, I think, for this one. And we'll just go with the generic dirt path. Um, oh, maybe we could use the nature reserve with uh, lights. And then we can sneak a connection in right here. And we'll swing out over here. And then right in like that. Yeah, that's really cool. I like that. Oh, there is some glitchiness happening right here. So let's make sure that we actually get to the appropriate height. There we go. All right, so this is kind of the setup. Uh, we'll just kind of infill a lot, a lot of this with some trees and whatnot. Uh, but let's turn zoning off of this road um, because we're gonna need to zone on this main street here. So it's important that uh, we have some nice clear zoning. Um, and since this needs commercial, I believe. It looks like we already maxed out on the nature and the picturesqueness, uh, but we need some shopping and some offices. So I'm thinking since like this is right next to a transit way, we could probably get, um, or yeah, sorry, a transit hub, we could probably get some offices right along here. And it wouldn't look too, too weird. Nothing too big though. Uh, and then maybe we get some nice uh, big commercial kind of stuff going on right here. Yeah, not, not too much though, just like that. We'll be able to hide it with um, some trees. That'll be helpful, but definitely not zoning along here. So we can probably get a few more um, 
commercial buildings along the zone, but we should definitely get commercial uh, in this zone along the main street here. All right, so we have organic and local produce on here along with farming industry and wall-to-wall -wall, uh, offices. I feel like this mix is really, really good. Um, and yeah, this is gonna turn out real nice. I'm enjoying this so far. Um, so we'll let this all come in. Whoa, these buildings look great. Be really cool having the SkyTrain run right beside it. Yeah, wow, very neat. Um, okay. So, yeah, we'll save the detailing for later, but right along here, I was thinking this area could be a park. We don't have too many just plain old parks uh, along the waterfront, so let's kind of think about doing that. So, we have some of these new park assets. I'm wondering if any of them can fit inside of kind of our, our idea. So, I think they're in the tourism. Yes, I, yes, they are. Okay. Uh, so, the birch park with trees is definitely too big. Okay. Um, same with the pond, yeah, and that one, obviously, but we could get like a tourist park. It's not really the kind of park that I was thinking of, though. I was thinking more along the lines of the, these tiny parks, in a way. So we have a gazebo kind of right there. We don't need another gazebo. Um, maybe one of these. A little sitting area. Yeah, I guess over here it's a bit higher on the, on the, the cliff face, which is totally cool. It's good to get some changes. Uh, but what if we were to rotate this park and slide it in right here? Would this still look okay? And I say yes, it does. Uh, then we can swing this one over here on this side. That's enough detailing for now. Uh, just, you know, add a little bit of a park uh, going on through here beside uh, these restaurants. Um, yeah, it looks awesome. All right, so this flooding sign is gonna be there forever, uh, just FYI, but when you were in this view, it looks awesome. So uh, now we are on to the hotel that has trees inside of it. Uh, so maybe we should think about removing those before we build next time. Uh, but there we go. Okay. So, uh, now we need to kind of think about how this park is going to play out, um, because that's going to be a major factor of this area. Um, and I'm thinking of bringing this road in, kind of making an old bridge right here across this, uh, estuary, kind of, uh, dried up riverbed. I'm sure it has, uh, fluctuations in the winter when all the the snow melt happens and stuff like that but also it's just drainage for it into uh, Oracle River here so uh, that that's great it's actually uh, too high we had a suggestion for uh, connecting this with a canal but I think it's a little too high the uh, the water level we don't have locks in this game I wonder if they'll make locks uh, like you know locks as in you know locks on a canal I wonder if that's gonna be in CS2 it'd be really cool because the canals, while well, they work great, this would be a little steep. Um, we can even check to see how the elevation is from kind of uh, this area here. So let's just select this. This is a, a good depth for where the canal would kind of be, just right here. So I'll, I right clicked there, then we'll go over into the lake here and we'll see how tall it is. Yeah, so we're a few meters above sea level. So unfortunately, a canal is not going to work for this situation, but we're going to be able to play it up with, um, uh, you know, make a really cool area here for, uh, you know, showing that this does flood every now and then. And we might be able to pump water into it a little bit too, which would be cool. Um, so let's connect up this area with an old bridge, connect it into here, and that'll kind of section out Kent Gardens. And then we can uh, attach stuff into here for... Um, the hotel. Uh, how's the hotel doing? So a bit of shopping did it a little bit of good. We're making money, which is good. Uh, popularity 72. That's not horrible. Uh, it's not great though, but that's tricky to do. Mountain Lodge, close to all the shopping. I tried to get it close enough, 
Uh, maybe we can add in a bit more because it is the, uh, the organic and local produce. So we could make it seem like it's tied in a little bit. Uh, really quickly though, let's check some services because um, we have a good spot nearby. We So that is a fire station. So that sh we should actually be fine. Uh, surprising that it's all red, but I don't think we have a police station anywhere nearby. Um, yeah, maybe we could get another one in here. Uh, and healthcare, how's healthcare? Uh, not good at this way, okay. So we need a healthcare building and a police station. Uh, let's get the police station uh, right behind the, this uh, metro stop here. And, whoa, cool, cool police building. Uh, we could use the police security center. Um, maybe this is like, uh, yeah, let's actually place this building down. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, maybe this is like transit uh, police or something. And we can um, move it with move it behind here. All right, so this area is set up for detailing down the line. We have healthcare out this way now too. And we added in a bunch more commercial and maybe it just hasn't caught up. I don't know. Uh, hey, there is offices nearby. That's frustrating that uh, it's not showing up. Maybe if we just delete one of these and uh, throw in an office right there, maybe it'll be close enough. I don't know, maybe it's not distance. Maybe it's like street length, like how far it is away uh, by car or something like that. Um, I don't know, but I left a space here for a path, um, thinking that it might help out as well. All right, so now it's time to do this aforementioned road. Um, we could try and also play with the terrain a little bit to maybe see if we can get a bit of water flowing down uh, this estuary, but not too much. Um, just if we were to do that, yeah, look, look at that, that's... That's too much. So let's undo the terrain modification. Um, yeah, that's that's unfortunate. Maybe if we kind of go with one of uh, these and we shrink the water capacity to basically nothing. Yeah, maybe it's a bit of leftovers from the rain or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, at least we're seeing it flow down a little bit, uh, which is kind of funny. Um, okay, so now we need to find a cool spot for an old bridge. Uh, so this bridge would have been here originally. Maybe it was a, an original crossing of this area. This area is a little tricky with the terrain, right? So um, we have a crossing right here, a more modern crossing over on this side um, on like an elevated causeway kind of thing. Uh, but maybe we can get a connection right from here across. So let's go into bridge mode. We're going to use a covered bridge. These are really rare uh, in real life. So covered bridges, um, real neat in real life, real inconvenient as well. Uh, they're usually only in situations um, that, you know, are historical bridges. They're not... Um, on main avenues or anything like that. So this is kind of going to be like a bit of a legacy road in a way. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a major connection for a little bit until we figure out proper connections from this road, including this connection through here. So I think this road's probably going to go in this direction and then we're probably going to get another one up from here, maybe bypassing this old bridge. Maybe this is going to be like old Concord Street or something like that. And then we'll have Concord Street, <laughs> if that makes sense. So we'll have like, we'll make this uh, really, really slow to drive on. Um, but let's start off with kind of looking at the train again. I don't think there's any issues actually though. Uh, but yeah, there is no issues. So we'll swing it out this way. And then we'll make it all dipsy doodly to kind of discourage people from using it as well. Then we'll connect it up on a 90 degree 
ish. There we go. Oh, forgot to do that without, um, or with the uh, uh, tree clipping off. There we go. And we have a fallen tree right here. Let's make sure we get rid of that as well. All right. So now we can continue this here. But we said that this road was going to be a bit more of a modern take. So let's make it seem like this is the original connection. So how are we going to do this? Well, let's make it flow naturally into here. I don't think we need guidelines. No, let's throw them on. Uh, so maybe if it kind of curved like this in. Okay, but where would it have gone if we were to just continue straight from this node? Okay, sweet. So now we can redo this part. Uh, oh, and that one right there. And then this one will have a strange connection, like an awkward connection like that. Fantastic. Okay, so that looks very much like a, a, a bypass. That was once done. Okay, there we go. And we'll make this one this road two for now. And then this road we can continue. Actually, I, I doubt this road's going to continue this way as it is right now. Um, why don't we take it down to a four lane uh, road in size right about here. But we'll keep the amount of lanes uh, through this zone. And we'll use the bypass as... That opportunity to uh, get the lanes down to a uh, a smaller level, I guess if that makes sense. Okay, great. So we have this bypass now. No one should really be using it right now, but that's really cool. And what it's done is it's kind of framed Kent Gardens for us. Um, so let's maybe think about figuring out where we're gonna have like a main park gate for Kent Gardens. Um, so I guess in a way this is the main gate, right? Because it's the hotel. But maybe if there's like a uh, a hiking kind of area, it would probably maybe be in this zone. So we'll have uh, a road coming off of here. Let's select this road. What? I said picker. There we go. And we'll use the same kind of idea as before. So we'll use this uh, road piece right here as a bit of a driveway and maybe let's make it a bit more interesting by pulling a curve on it a little bit and then we're going to make this a nature reserve i actually don't know if the park zone is out this way it is not out this way so uh, let's kind of create this whole area as kent gardens all right so we're going to go again with the nature reserve uh, mainly because these are the kind of gates that I want, um, particularly nature, small nature reserve main gate, uh, and small nature reserve main gate here is cool because it looks so much just like a trailhead. And that's the idea, right? This isn't really the main gate of the park. That's over here. Most of the tourists are going to be coming into the park this way. Um, because this is kind of out of the way, but this is a realistic kind of uh, connection. Uh, okay, so we actually don't have all the level five buildings unlocked. We need to kind of work on that a little bit. And how we're gonna do that, well, I'm, I don't want to kind of cram everything in this one, but we're really close in another park, Lafayette Gardens, where Kevin is. Uh, Kevin is in the forest running around. Oh, here he is. Oh, that that's a bear. That's a bear, and and that's a moose. I hope Kevin is okay. He is. He's actually sleeping right now. So I know he's okay. Uh, but uh, Kevin ran away to his friend's house. Uh, so um, in, in this game. Uh, so we need to get a little bit of value in here. So about 800 value. We've crushed the visitors section. So uh, let's kind of pump out the rest of this park. We spend a little while on this park uh, in some live streams. Um, so let's kind of just kind of do this build in a speed through. I'm thinking a couple trailheads right here and here, uh, none on this street, and then we'll run some paths through here and then we'll kind of get some main area connections uh, like this uh, at those trailheads. And then hopefully that'll raise the value and voila.
Fantastic, we got to level five. We got the bouldering site and the nature reserve museum, which is new for me. I've never used it, um, and but it looks awesome. Look at this building. I mean, that's in the water. Let's go place it over here so we can kind of see what it looks like. Yeah, look at that, that looks so cool. And it's gonna fit so perfectly with, with the aesthetic we were going for, so I'm so glad we finished Lafayette Park. Um, now, there were a few name suggestions for Lafayette Park, but I just finished reading a book about uh, the Marquis de Lafayette and um, very interesting historical character. So I like it. We're going to keep it. <laughs> There's uh, lots of uh, place names named after Marquis de Lafayette. So I think it makes sense to kind of uh, keep that uh, there. But I don't know. The British don't really like them. And this is British Columbia after all. But I'm going to keep it. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we got the Nature Reserve Museum, which was one of these whole one of the whole purposes of uh, doing that uh, Nature Reserve build. Which I guess I didn't really show off too much what I did, but I didn't do too much detailing. Uh, bridge right across here into this island where we have some um, viewing decks and whatnot. Uh, a few viewing decks every now and then over here, uh, and then just you know a bunch of paths throughout here make it look interesting uh, from the sky. I'm not the biggest micro detailer. Uh, but we have a, just a simple trailhead over here, and then over here we have a bit more of a complicated one with a bit of a washroom and whatnot. Um, maybe a place to get a map. Uh, and then over here we have the zoo cafe. So I think this kind of uh, works with the aesthetic of this kind of area. And I, you know, not everything has to be gated unless you're trying to make money off of these, but that's okay. And then right over here we just have a simple little trailhead as well, right beside the church. So, uh, Nature Reserve Museum, this was the whole point. I wanted this out here as a part of like the lodge area. Uh, it uh, looks really neat. It's going to raise the value. We're going to need water, of course. But, yeah, I thought this, uh, this was uh, a neat addition uh, to this kind of area. It's particularly because it looks um, like the same style. Uh, and whatnot, but this is going to quickly become one of my new favorite buildings. This looks just amazing. Uh, and then maybe we can detail it up a little bit. What's needed around here? Steps along the side, nothing along the back. Okay, so yeah, this can be really simple. We don't even really need a parking lot since we have parking over here. Um, all right, so now it's time. Now it's time to detail up Kent Gardens. So we have our trailhead right here for those not wanting to park um, over on that side, but maybe we can get a bit more parking. Uh, just, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, parking for cars that, uh, overflow parking, that's the word, oh my goodness. Overflow parking right here. All right, so now that we've got that, uh, simple trailhead design. Let's get a bathroom. Let's maybe go with the zoo bathroom uh, because I feel like the architecture of it looks a little bit more in line with um, a nature reserve. Okay, water. Did we sort out the water problem on the museum? It looks like we did. Okay. Yeah, it's barely inside of that. All right, so restrooms, that's all that's needed at a trailhead, really. Um, so now let's get our key features in. We already have the museum uh, in Kent Gardens, which I believe the value, yeah, the value is already, already there. Uh, but let's add a few more things into here, uh, particularly from the nature reserve section, uh, which is particularly these, these, uh, you know, the, the lookout towers and the viewing decks. Uh, these are really, really cool. Um, the viewing decks in particular, I think this one's going to look a little bit better with uh, in this little pocket here. We do something like that right up into the hotel. So you walk out of the doors. I'm going to line this up properly. So you walk out of the doors and you can go right onto the viewing deck. That's really cool. We're going to need to run a path uh, through here, though, unless it's not in the park area. Is that maybe the issue? 
No, we're going to run a path through there. That's cool with me. Uh, but let's get all of these kind of locations that we want first. Uh, this is not a camping kind of res uh, resort. I'm going to delete the tents in Lafayette Park uh, recently. Or recently, uh, after this. Uh, but any other cool spots to get a look out? Yeah, right here is a really good spot. Let's go with the smaller one, though. All right, so we have um, them in some pretty cool spots. Let's get uh, a trail going through here. So kind of the idea for this is going to be uh, a loop pretty much from here all the way over to here where we're probably gonna have a secondary trailhead on this side. Um, so a loop kind of running around that area with a spur connection into the loop from here uh, and then here as well. All right, so here is Kent Hills so far. We're getting there, we're getting along pretty good. We have this hotel, we have uh, the museum, and I feel like this looks really, really cool. We have the hidden, uh, uh, you know, park car park area. Uh, we have a bit of a valley, or open space right here. I think that's important in a forest, uh, kind of, to kind of show some realism. And then right here, we're gonna get a crossing. Uh, now these roads are usually only like 20 kilometers per hour um, So I think we can get a crossing right here because I don't really want to get it too close I don't want to try to squeeze it under or anything like that and then we're going to continue that path up in this direction along um, The uh, the estuary here. I think that would be really cool uh, So that's kind of the plan for both sides of the, the build um, so let's kind of swing it out like this and let's check out the terrain uh, because we're gonna be following the terrain pretty str pretty strictly uh, because this is an estuary this definitely floods in the winter and yeah it's really cool so now let's get a crosswalk here so we'll go into TMPE uh, and we'll select this node and it is a crosswalk okay so that's good people will technically be able to cross uh, from this spot here and here So fantastic usually on these they're like one way um, At least from the ones that I've seen in rural Ontario uh, They're they're one way so there's like a signal that like when it's your turn to go uh, and there's usually pedestrian uh, Crossings and whatnot nearby but the longest covered bridge in the world is in New Brunswick, Canada uh, Which is uh, really cool. I've been on I've been on it. It's a uh, just some normal size bridge over a large river, uh, but it's the longest covered bridge. So there you go. Um, okay, so yeah, this build's coming along really, really nice. Fun little nature reserve build. Let's see uh, how Kent Gardens is doing. So yeah, tons of value, uh, but we just need to get visitors. So that means we just need to get people, though we have a lot of residential and commercial demand though. So that is good to see uh, what's coming up in this area over here will probably just suburb but I'm not doing that today um, but we should definitely get a bridge across here to here with like a pedestrian bridge right so uh, or maybe right at this point here because that is uh, a junction point right so let's go elevated All right, so this is looking really, really cool. 
uh, particularly from this area here. Uh, now, moving on to the next park, I think we're going to do this park and then we'll probably call it. Uh, one thing that was suggested a long time ago was to get an island in this in, uh, in Oracle Lake here. Uh, so, uh, a few things. I should probably place the place name of Oracle Lake uh, down so we see it from the sky. Which is the name of the map, by the way. Uh, which is why I'm sticking with this uh, name. And it was where, I, you know, I got the, the name for the, the series Oracle Valley. Uh, so perhaps it's perhaps it's named after this. And I think we said that perhaps it has tradition, uh, the word Oracle, perhaps it's descended from uh, indigenous place naming in this area um, and then retranslated probably a couple times to come up with the, the word Oracle. Uh, you know, changing perceptions of worldviews too at the time. Uh, so to create the name, I guess that is kind of what happens. Uh, so let's create an island uh, out of nothing. <laughs> so I think this is more for just aesthetic purposes. Uh, but let's get it about this high. And I'll elaborate on what I meant earlier. So uh, indigenous place naming uh, is really common in this part of the world, British Columbia. Which is what I'm basing the series, uh, or is, which is where I'm basing the series. Uh, we're going to get major flooding everywhere, by the way, while we're doing this. Uh, but, uh, you know, the indigenous people, which if this is Vancouver, um, you know, th there's many indigenous people in, in, in the area. Um, but, uh, you know, there were names of places before Europeans colonized this area. So what happened when uh, Europeans came is they were asking, you know, what's this place called and whatnot, uh, obviously. Um, Oh, I got a achievement. Cash flow. Have a bank building get flooded. That's hilarious. Uh, ooh, ooh. Hold on, hold on. Let's get back. Let's uh, let's take a little pause here, and let's throw out the pumping service uh, nearby. Maybe maybe two. Names were often you know told via a translator, uh, like usually a local person, right? translating um, but uh, then those names were translated into the colonial language so you know in this case we'll say it's English uh, but oftentimes those words were misunderstood by the you know the, the missionaries or the explorers or the government um, whoever was uh, was you know writing down the place naming and, uh, you know, the, the perceptions of, of what that word means would change based off of your worldview as well. So uh, Oracle seems to have, you know, some spiritual connotation, uh, which is interesting, just based off of the word itself. Uh, and there we go, a cool island. So just kind of switching up from leveling out and smoothing terrain and whatnot. So let's, uh, let's get some trees on. It's going gonna, it's gonna to look dead for a little while uh, until... The land recovers. Uh, I wonder if we add like fertile land or something like that onto it, if it will um, help at all. And we can't. So there we go. I guess we got our answer. So yeah, I'm going to throw some dead trees on this island. And then when it recuperates, we'll have a lush, beautiful island. Uh, maybe a few rocks too. That would be cool. Uh, anyways, yeah, so th there was a, a, a suggestion to uh, have a island in the middle of this lake. Uh, and I think that's a really cool idea, so. All right, I think that looks really, really neat. And I think our pumping services saved our town. Um, that was hilarious that we got an achievement for, for that. Oh, never mind, we lost a lot of buildings. Uh, that's okay. Uh, and what bank building got flooded? Well, it was the bank building that uh, we placed down right here. So, yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, I think we should probably place like an old pier on this on this island. Um, maybe we can use one of the nature reserve piers. That would be cool. One of these ones right here. Kind of find a good spot for a pier. Uh, right here. How about that? 
Must be constructed inside of a park area. Of course it, it, it needs to be constructed inside of a park area. Uh, so we'll just do this. But I don't think this is uh, island an island that uh, ex is accessible to the public. Um, area must have a main gate. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, I guess we'll do that later on. Yeah, I'm thinking this is just like a, a true nature reserve, uh, nature reserve island. Uh, so, I think we'll continue with Walnut Meadows as a nature reserve too. Uh, now, the reason why it's two separate parks is because that's just how I did it. There's no actual reason, and I don't think we're actually going to continue that. I think we're going to make all of this Kent Gardens. Um, because Kent Gardens is never going to get past level 2, probably, or maybe level 3. Uh, so why not try to give it its best opportunity possible to get to level 3? Uh, and that would be by making it rather large. Kent Gardens, there we go. And I guess we could probably bring it out. Actually, no, let's uh, leave it at about here. Um, okay, so let's run Concord Street now. So Concord Street... Uh, should probably look to connect up into Queen Elizabeth Street now. Uh, that was it was called like Elizabeth Gray Street or something like that, and I figured why not just call it Queen Elizabeth Street? That would just make sense. So let's connect up at a 90 degree angle. That's close enough, and then uh, this Concord Street could continue uh, if we wanted to off in this direction. So I'm just going to leave that uh, there, and now let's just clean things up and let's choose a good spot for our parking lot area for uh, this side of the river. All right, so Kent Gardens has enough value to kind of sit for a long time and we don't need to do anything. And I like this open space over here and let's just check it out really quickly over on this side. So we have a parking lot different than the others, more like city related, which I'm kind of leaning towards getting a bit more urbanized zones through here. So uh, that is cool. Uh, we got a gazebo, we got some city, uh, city park assets in here. We also got a lookout over on this side, uh, which will look out into the bay over on this side, which is really cool. And then we have a bit of a two-pier system, so maybe people can canoe around here that they can get off on this side. Uh, this building probably has a washroom in it and whatnot, but there's even a little trail running up here where you can get on this uh, lookout and look out at the beautiful skyline of Oracle Lake, um, which is really, really cool. Uh, and yeah, it's ready to be expanded upon in this direction as well, uh, and then the suburb probably in this zone so yeah this is looking real good i think there's one more thing we need to do and that is just some minor detailing uh in here and then uh along the original hotel here what is happening oh it's because it's always trying to fix this okay good thing we check that out let's delete these uh temporary uh things over here the, the pipes and hopefully those trucks will disappear too and yeah now tourists can actually get to their destination so that's good <laughs> wow that was uh that was wild uh okay so let's start down here and then we'll end uh up top um all right 
I'll talk to you in a second. All right, so here we have it, a fun nature reserve hotel build, like a mountain lodge uh, kind of thing with a historical aspect to it. So I think this kind of area looks so, so neat. It's gonna tie in so well with the lore of the series as well. Both, uh, you know, his real historical lore with the, the kind of architecture and whatnot and our own kind of own vibes with the monorail running through this area. Uh, but yeah, this looks really cool. I'm glad I built the transit way a uh, transit hub beforehand because that saved us some time um, and Yeah, this area looks really neat too with some greenhouses and whatnot some organic and local produce literally the produce is made right here And sold over here. So that's pretty cool. We also have some hip urban buildings uh, as well down this kind of corridor and then got some nice pops of color with these purple flowering trees um, and then we also have our parks as well so that was really fun to do nice additions into the area really fills it out and we're, when we're looking at the area from the sky we can tell that those are parks it's really really nice uh, i really like the island we added in too that's really really fun uh, and then we also leveled up our lafayette park here to level five with uh, some fun quick additions into the area um, but i hope you had a wonderful day folks and we will chat soon we find a good spot for the screenshot. Peace out.